We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? We're doing all right. We got one week down of football here, Jared. Yeah, yeah. Um, Unfortunately, was... we are recording at the same time that uh, the uh, biggest game yeah. has gone on, but uh, details, Oops. details. Oops. <laughs> yeah, uh, really, so far, a pretty chalk weekend with the exception of one game. We get uh, just a little taste of chaos. Week one, we get a little taste of chaos. I think no matter how this LSU FSU game plays out, um, in the long run, it's not going to matter. It's ne- neither way, it's a chaos game, I would say. Um, what what is the score right now? Does anyone have that up? It is it is fourteen all, I believe. I'm gonna I'm gonna look. Nope, it is seventeen fourteen halftime LSU now. Okay, but regardless, however this goes, it's it's not not a chaos result either way. But there will be at least uh, a second uh, top twenty five loss. Of because like I said, we only, we only got one this weekend. It was it was TCU losing to Colorado. Um, are we? Are we, should we be taking Colorado seriously? I think it's probably from a national perspective, maybe the only storyline <laughs> right now. Uh, it, yeah, I mean, yeah, you, you definitely can. You definitely can say that it just. Yeah, they they came. They definitely really surprised me. I was really, uh, I was really su- taken surprised by how well Colorado did here. But honestly, like, I was very, very impressed with uh, Colorado. Was the um, was Travis Hunter? You, yeah. you look at Travis Hunter. He is the difference difference maker in that game, and something Agreed. to keep an eye out for as the season goes along here. If they can hold back uh, Travis Hunter and not not allow him to catch eleven passes for over a hundred yards in that game, or in any game, how good will Colorado do moving forward? Yeah, and I mean, and it should be noted, and this isn't again. You we go listen to the episode we put out literally a week ago, our national preview. We told you TCU brought back nobody. Like, I know they were in the playoffs last year, but as far as talent loss is concerned, they lost it. Like, they lost it. Like, this is not last all, year's TCU team. Yeah, and all honestly, like, TCU, like, should, should have really won this game. You look at the stats here. TCU ran the ball 7.1 yards per carry versus Colorado 1.6 per carry. But it's the yards after catch of what Colorado uh, came up with, uh, mainly uh, Dylan Edwards, their running back, <laughs> making five catches and three touchdowns uh, in the reception um, field there and at tackled on another touchdown on the ground. It's it's that yards after catch that kept Colorado in this game and eventually eventually won it uh, forty five to forty two. Yeah, and so, but yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely something to keep an eye out for here is is how well uh, Travis Hunter does as well as Dylan Edwards, but mainly Travis Hunter and can he continue to play. What was it? 60, 60 plays or 60 snaps he was because he's, he plays both wide receiver and corner. Can he continue that through 14 games this year? Yeah. And, you know, to, to quote Dennis Green, if you want to crown their ass, then crown their ass. But, <laughs> you know, like I'm I'm not ready to do that with Colorado yet. Um Buckeye Matt down in the discord chat says Georgia only scoring 17 points in the first half against uh, UT Martin uh, should be collegiate chaos in my book. You're not wrong. Um, if, if, if Ohio State fans want to feel bad about week one, and I don't care what the final score ended up saying. Y'all didn't look nearly as bad as Georgia did in week one. We're talking we're talking you we're talking unit university of tennessee martin we're talking about tennessee martin and yeah they 
<laughs> they looked terrible in the first half. They run the score up a bit in the second half and they make it look like it's not too bad. Whatever. I don't care. Um, Michigan's offense didn't look great against against East Carolina. Their defense, I thought, looked fine, but their offense didn't look good. Um, the fun, know, funny thing about that, funny thing about that, I know a lot of people are giving in, in, in right for right for release. So um, in our last episode, uh, State only produced 382 yards of offense against a Big Ten opponent. Michigan uh, put up what was it 402 yards yeah 402 yards of offense against an aac opponent i i mean how much worse do you think is eastern carolina compared to indiana they're not that good Jared. i i but neither is india i'm just i i would be interested to see I'd be interested to see what what would the spread be Indiana versus Eastern Carolina. I bet it's not more than ten points. Is in I don't know I don't think Indiana is a huge favorite over Eastern Carolina for 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 what it's worth. That's fair. Um, right, um, Nebraska, other, other by the way, he- Kyle. Nebraska, new coach, <laughs> same old story. They lose by three points. Uh, I thought Minnesota was the vastly superior team in this game, um, but only win by three points. Eastern yeah, Carolina was, equals not any good this season, but but neither is Indiana is my point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm not I'm not Man. trying to say the Pirates are good. Sure. I'm just saying the Hoosiers uh, are w- bottom three in the w- Big w- Ten this year. When When do you start feeling bad for Nebraska here? Eh. Why? <laughs> why? Why do I have to feel bad for Nebraska? Why is that oh, no, a thing? No, that's that's why I was asking you the question. <laughs> yeah, but you said when, not if. <laughs> okay. No, I feel bad. I, I, I do feel bad for their fans. You, no, no one should have to keep losing like that. Like, and again, I don't. At I'm not point, saying at that I don't point. Know it's, this... At that point, it's the coach. It's you got to put it on the coaching staff. Like you can. But it's a brand new okay. coaching staff, Kyle. <laughs> What are we, what are it, you blame it on do? the coaching staff again. <laughs> you blame it on the new coaching staff. <laughs> but but for what it's worth, and I think this is more the fault of Minnesota than it is the the benefit of Nebraska, if I'm being honest, um, or the credit to Nebraska, if I'm being honest. Um, I, I Minnesota killed Nebraska in this. If you watched this game. Minnesota was vastly superior through the first half of the game and were what I think only vast. I want to say vastly through the first half of the game. Yes, they were. Okay. Uh, Then Nebraska had a really, really nice third quarter. Um, The point is Nebraska dominated the first half of the game and had nothing to show for it. And you just can't do that. You can't dominate the first half of the game and have nothing to show for it. Yeah, but, but the problem is that Minnesota could not run at all. They rushed 25 times for 55 yards. They could not do anything on the ground there. Anything. They could in the first and, 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 and it's because the only reason Minnesota won this game here was because Nebraska had four turnovers in this game. Jeff Sims threw three, and uh, there was a fumble somewhere in there as well like sims yeah, that, that that's that's the reason why minnesota won here was four turnovers to one sims is not meant to throw the ball more than 10 yards down the field that is true uh <laughs> you're if you're in nebraska i think it's time to live or die by the triple option once again like because you're just you're not going to get it done in the air with this team this year Agreed, yes. All right, let's move on to other teams here. Utah, the Utes, Jared, beat Florida 24 to 11. This is a good win. Uh, not a good Florida team this year. What what did pick six say that they're like projected to be fifth in the East, in the SEC East Something this like year? It. Yeah. And it's not like a good fifth. 
and it's not a good East for what it's worth. Like it's just mm-hmm. Georgia in the East this year. Uh, there's nobody else of note in the East. Uh, I know a lot of people are going to try and say Tennessee, but I, I saw nothing. I, 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 I'm not buying that. I'm not buying that at all. And I saw nothing from this weekend to change my mind. I mean, Nebraska got a Georgia tech quarterback, uh, that, that can't expect, uh, they, yeah, they can't expect him to throw man does nothing but triple option. And but for what it's worth, he's real good at it. Sims is a beast at running the ball. Um, just live or die by the triple option, Nebraska. You, you, you'll be fun. If nothing else, you'll be fun. Yeah. I will tune in to watch so you every week, Nebraska, yeah. if you're on the triple so option. This, this Utah and Florida game here. Yeah, honestly, it, it could have been a lot uglier here. Florida, Florida is so one, one dimensional here. And you, you had to rely on a, on a uh, transfer here f- in uh, Graham Mertz from uh, from Wisconsin here, who had to throw the ball 44 times because you were averaging 0.6 yards per carry in this game. <laughs> I, I don't. I'm just gonna say yikes. And if you wanna, if you wanna figure out which one of those facts I was but, yikesing but, but, at, but, 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 the answer is but, all Jared, of them. But Florida has to go through such such a such a hard schedule because yeah. they're in the SEC. Yeah, that that and Utah. And Utah. No, we're not about talking about Utah. Utah. They, 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 they just have such a tough schedule in the SEC. Like they just can't they just can't play week in, week out in the SEC and expect to run mm-hmm. well. Yeah, they're they're so worried about their future schedule in the SEC that they lost <laughs> to Utah. Exactly. Speaking of, um, look, I'm going to say this again. The SEC East sucks. It's bad this year. It is really, is it? Again, I I don't have the pick six preview up right now. I think they had, it was like Tennessee, then Missouri as, as three. uh, And again, like Tennessee's not good. No, watching them this week, I didn't even watching Tennessee. Down, they right? seemed like a much improved defense. Um, I don't know if that's saying. I mean, like, okay, I be better. Um, but Milton, Milton's still Milton, man. Like, I, yeah. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, I still don't. Tr- I still don't trust Milton uh, throwing the ball a lot. Yeah, it's, all... I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, he'll he'll have his games and he'll he'll get some he'll get some good wins here, but yeah, I just I just don't I wouldn't trust him as my quarterback though. For number two in the SEC East, at your quarterback, this is your god. Like I, whatever. Mm-hmm. Michigan does what Michigan should do against Eastern Carolina. Um, it's fine. Not a blowout, but it's a fine win. Um, if if you're looking at this and thinking it's vastly superior to Ohio State's win, you're wrong. If you think that Ohio State and Michigan had very similar opening opening weekends, whatever, it's fine. Tennessee LA is State. the Wisconsin LA, LA. of the SEC of late. Oh my God, we won more than eight games. College football bound. Get the hell out of here. Um. I feel like calling Tennessee Wisconsin is either insulting to Wisconsin or because like at least Wisconsin can win their division. Yes, I was about to say that. At least they've made it to their conference championship game. Oh, then we have Purdue, Jared. Then we have Purdue. Yeah. We lost to Fresno State 39 to 35. Kyle, is it, is it Purdue? No, it's, it's the other Jared. It's Purdue. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's (laughs) fair. Um, at home too. Yeah. At home too. Um, we, we'd been saying that the three worst teams in the big 10 were Indiana, 
Rutgers and Northwestern. Do we reevaluate I we, that? I guess I guess we uh you know let, let's let's give it a couple of weeks and then we'll reevaluate, Jared. Let's 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 not over let's not over let's not it's not Fresno let's not jump State. the gun here over one week here. Fresno State. I know. It's, Fresno it's a bad State. loss. It's a bad Kyle? loss there. Kyle. Fresno State. Yeah. But Purdue always seems to get that one big upset almost every year and completely fuck someone. Yeah. But Fresno State. (laughs) Uh, Oregon absolutely demolished the Portland State Vikings. Good job, Oregon. Um, Oakland made Butch Davis almost cry on the sideline. Good job, Oklahoma. Um, Illinois, well, they won. They they beat the Toledo Rockets. We we don't need to talk about how or what the final score was. Important. They just the important won. thing is that Illinois won. Important thing is that they are one and zero and have a chance to go two and zero. The the sleeping giant that is the uh, fighting a lion eye. Um, maybe is still sleepy. Maybe uh, the all the hype around Illinois suddenly feels a little overhyped. Uh, Notre Dame demolishes Tennessee State in a battle of two head coaches who used to play for Ohio State. Yes, that that was right. Yes. Yeah. Eddie, Eddie George, Eddie George is Tennessee state. Um, hey man, like do that's, that's your, that's, that's your, that's your Buckeye brother on the other sideline. Why, why you gotta, why you gotta do him like that? Freeman. No. Come why on, why you gotta do him like that? Toledo is former... picked to win the Mac. Hey, I, is Toledo picked to win the Mac? Sure. But, but hear me out on this one. It's the Mac. Like whenever we we talk about conference realignment all the time on this show, it's literally maybe my favorite topic to talk about is conference realignment. Do you know what we never, ever, ever talk about in conference realignment? The Mac. Why? Because no one wants any of them. Speaking of former Ohio State um, players here, Fickle, the fighting Fickles. They wait a minute. This is this is a good one from Matt. Uh, they did to TSU what we expected Georgia to do to UT Martin. Correct. Mm-hmm. That's fair. Although I, I think is Tennessee State is is FCS, and I think UT Martin is Conference USA. I mean, they're they're a they're at least an FBS team for for what it's worth. Like it's. Like, I know we make fun of UT Martin and all, but might as well be FCS. But but they're not. You know, they're not. University That's... of Tennessee at Martin is an FCS at the Ohio Valley Conference. UT Martin is? Oh, I'm confusing them with Middle Tennessee. I, I rescind UT? everything I just said. I literally just confused them with Middle Tennessee for a moment. That's That's my bad. I rescind. My bad. They are FCS. All right. I was, th- I was about, thinking of Middle Tennessee. Wisconsin beats up Buffalo 38 to 17. Yeah. Not not the, not a great showing. Um again the the 38 to 17 is you're thinking oh that doesn't sound great. It's 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 better than what it actually was. The 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 final score I mean, makes this was, look better for Wisconsin than it really was. It was 14-10 at halftime for Wisconsin. Not a good showing for Wisconsin on their first game out. Brand new coaches. Give them some time. They'll new, they'll new figure cor- new it quarter, out. New quarterback here. New quarterback. New coaching staff. Give them some time. Uh, you know, give them a little bit of patience, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Um, I That being said, I didn't watch this game. It was on opposite the Ohio State game. And if 
man, I love I love doing this show and everything. But if you think I, I DVR'd Wisconsin and Buffalo with the intent of going back and watching it in the short amount of time I had before we recorded this show, you're wrong. No way Wisconsin beats Tennessee. Um, if they played next week, no, Wisconsin wouldn't beat Tennessee. Mm-mm. If they play each other in a bowl game at the end of the year, I think Wisconsin could beat Tennessee. Wisconsin's not very good right now. Wisconsin might be pretty decent in November. Yeah. Well, uh, two other games here that I want to mention about Penn State defeating West Virginia 38 to 50. Yeah, uh, Alar, was... Alar, Alar actually looks pretty good here. He he threw three touchdowns, 325 yards in this game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it definitely had a really good showing here. I've I've been in I've been in uh Drew Alar fan for a very long time. I wanted Ohio State to snag him. Um it didn't work out like that. I Big fan of that kid. I'm still a big fan of that kid, despite the fact that he's currently playing for Penn State. Um, if you don't, if anyone listening doesn't know, he's an Ohio kid. Um, from from Medina. Yep, from Medina. Um, that being said, this was not a great showing for Penn State. West Virginia, not going to be a, a good team this year. Um West Virginia stayed in this pretty close for a while. Um, 14, seven at halftime, but yeah, it's not, not a, not a fantastic showing for West Virginia. It's not a, yeah, or, I mean, for Penn state, not a, it's a fine, it's, it's fine. It's, in, yeah, my, it's, in my it's opinion, not a, yeah, I think it was fine. It's not anything to throw any red flags up about or be super concerned about. It's week one, right? It's week one. Um, again, yeah. if, that, if, if we're talking, is this roughly equivalent to the showing and like West Virginia is a better team than either Eastern Carolina or Indiana in case that needs to be said out loud. They are better than those teams. Um, But again, like if we're talking like the three best teams in the big 10, none of them had fantastic week ones. And I'm not necessarily concerned about any of them at this point. PSU uh, got a touchdown with six seconds left in the game. That shouldn't count Um, unless you had money on it and you needed that. Uh, But I don't think that even got, what was the, wait a minute. Wasn't that a 20 point game? Wasn't that a 20 point spread that counted for a lot of people? If I am remembering that correctly. Nope. My egg parlay hit big. Congratulations, Matt. (laughs) What was the, what was it? I'm trying to look right here. 21 point, yep, 21 points. So yes, it did, Jared. That, that, that last touchdown counted for a lot of people. <laughs> if you're scoring a touchdown with six seconds left to cover a 20 point spread, I think that <laughs> the, I, someone needs investigated. Somebody needs Someone had money yes. on that. Someone at Penn State, <laughs> James Franklin had money on that game. <laughs> I demand an investigation. Franklin owed someone. Yeah, Franklin had money on that game. In the Battle of the uh, Carolinas, Kyle, North Carolina yes. reigns supreme, as long as we don't include Clemson in this conversation. Um, yeah, North, North Carolina. I think I said it during our slip picks. Um this was the easiest bet. Carolina, North Carolina was only favored by three and a half points in this game. And I was like, no, yeah. this was the easiest bet on the calendar. Easiest bet on the calendar. Why do people keep falling for Spencer Rattler? Why do oh, oh. people keep falling for the lie that is Spencer Rattler? Uh, you're get. Anybody's guess is as good as mine here. I, I I really don't know. I mean, yes, he threw the ball 39 times for 353 yards, but that was it. No touchdowns, no interceptions, did not run the ball. He had, I don't know how many times he sacked it, but the stat here had 13 carries for negative 22 yards. And so my guess is that he got sacked quite a few times as well, but yeah. 
I've never, I was never a big Spencer Rattler fan and him going to South Carolina didn't change anything in my opinion here. No. Yeah. Rattler was the only quarterback Lincoln Riley missed on. Yeah. Lincoln Riley literally made has has made every single quarterback he has ever coached look good except for Spencer Rattler. Yikes. Yep. Lincoln Riley so, couldn't make you look good. And that leaves just one game which we cannot really talk about cuz uh Game still going on. It is 17 all Florida State and LSU. But as we mentioned before, in the grand scheme of things, it's not going to going to really mean much at all. I mean, they, they're both good teams. It doesn't look like we're looking at a blowout. So I think this loss isn't going to hurt. If either if either or both of these teams end up in the playoff conversation, I don't think this loss hurts either of them too terribly bad. Obviously you'd rather win it. It's still a win is much better than a loss, but um, mm -hmm. they, they should be fine. Um, sounds more like Gamecocks O-line has serious issues. I don't doubt that it's, I mean, that's not a, a team that normally recruits incredibly well, unless the player is literally from South Carolina. Wow. North Carolina had nine sacks. I didn't. <laughs> 16 tackle for losses. Yeah. From the it, Carolina defense here. Ooh. Yeah. Oh boy. You're, you're right. <laughs> you're right, Woody. And I, I didn't watch this game in great detail, but I know from watching Spencer Rattler many times in the past, he has a tendency to hold the ball too long and scramble around and try and make stuff happen. I'm not saying that's what happened in this game. Again, I, I, to, I was switching back and forth between this and and Penn State and West Virginia. I was paying more attention to Penn State, West Virginia. So I was watching North Carolina, yep. South Carolina during the commercials. So I don't want to act like I like sat down and studied this game because I didn't. But from watching Spencer Rattler in the past. He has a tendency to make his own sacks sometimes. I don't know that yep. that's what happened in this game, but I. I, I say that D looked scary, but it was uh, Rutgers of the SEC. So I take it with a grain of salt. Buckeye, Matt, you summed that up incredibly well. Yes, I agree. Yeah. All right. Any last, any last thoughts, comments about week one here? We still have a Clemson game on Monday that obviously Kyle, even we released this game or released this show on a Tuesday. As Kyle has already pointed out multiple times, the LSU FSU game is happening as we're recording this. So we don't know what happened with the Clemson game. So if there's some big upset there that we're not talking about, that's why. Um, mm -hmm. if, it, if there's not some big upset, we probably wouldn't have talked about it anyway. Uh, yep, so yep. just want to cover my base there that that game is still uh, 20 over, well, less than 24 hours, but still mostly a day away from even starting for mm -hmm. us as we record this. So I just yeah. want to... Well Cover my ass we're, we're, on we're, that one. We're, we're going to have some if more entertaining Duke beats games. Clemson, that would be fucking sweet. Yeah, I agree, Matt. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so looking ahead of week two here, Jared, just looking at some some interesting games. Uh, I think I think Nebraska is going to get killed by Colorado next week <laughs> in week two here. <laughs> um, looking down. Uh, I think this is the no nope, no nope, there's another one um one of two game ranked games here Ole Miss and Tulane surprise Tulane is ranked here but here we are uh, Texas A&M and Miami going at it in week two Texas and Alabama is going to be the big game uh, yep. next week here that everybody's going to be talking about that game and Wisconsin and Washington State we got. Two power five teams going at it there. And I think that's about it. I think that's really the big games that I'm seeing right up, up front here. I might be missing one, but those are, I think that should get you through, Jared. Cool, cool. Um, anything in the Ask Sloopcast mailbag we want to cover in this episode? Uh, so Woody asks, uh, grade the performances of Wisconsin, Wisconsin, Michigan, Penn State, and our Buckeyes. Like rank them oh. one through four. I was kind of doing that during the course of the show, accidentally. Um, 
I would say Penn State won, mostly yeah. because that's the best opponent that was played. Um, Michigan probably two, Ohio State three, Wisconsin four. Fair enough. Fair do, enough. Do you agree? I would say Penn State one, and I would say Ohio State two. I, I th- I'll give the, the I give the way with- that Ohio State uh, how Ohio State's defense played versus how Michigan's defense played. So I'll give I'll give the edge number two to Ohio State, then Michigan, and then Wisconsin. It's, I I I I think the most fair way of saying it would be one two A two B and four. Uh, I think Ohio State and Michigan's it's performances fine you... were pretty equal. So, like, if you want to say, if you want to flip flop two and three, I think that's totally fair. I think Michigan's offense played better, but I think Ohio State's defense played better. Honestly, it's not much better. Like, I, I know we, we we talked about it in the, yesterday's episode, but it's not much better. It's not much better. Hey, Sun Card. Sun Card's a master at joining us right as we're about to end the show. Like it's a it's a it's, it's actually an incredibly impressive skill. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, I think that's it. I I think that is it here. We're doing we're doing good, Sun Card. Thanks for asking. Uh, we are. I think that's it, Jared. Um, we don't have any other questions here. Um, don't have anything in the cow's corner here. It's just trying to see if there's anything here but it's just constant talking about the Ohio State Indiana game and what Ohio State's going to do or what they're going to change and yada 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 we'll talk more about that on Wednesday's episode all right uh tonight's ending music once again just like on Monday will be from a Columbus based band called Super Destroyer Super Destroyer is very hard to nail down uh with a with a genre kind of depends upon the song but uh, with that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to uh, drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Super Destroyer. Super Destroyer.